In the last tutorial, we used the JDBC template that's provided by Spring in order to reduce a DAO method, which was around this many lines of code, into something that was only this many. It's actually just one line of code. As long as you uh, take the string in line, we reduce the number of lines of code, we reduce the, uh, the number of things that we have to worry about, we reduce the number of things that we needed to do as boilerplate code. All that we did was we had getters and setters for the data source and the JDBC template. And actually we were using just the JDBC template and initializing it with the data source. And then we are ready to go. We could use the JDBC template in all our DAO methods. So the DAO method that we implemented was to get the count of all the records from a particular table. And since this is a query that returned an integer, we used a query for int method. Now the question is, what if we are running a query that returns some other data type. Now, JDBC template has some methods pre-built that handle some standard data types. So I'll just say JDBC template dot query. Now, if you look here, you have a query for int that takes in a SQL string. Of course, you see you have a whole lot of query methods over here, which takes in a lot of different objects. We'll have a look at some of these in the subsequent tutorials, but as far as a method that takes in a string, which is a SQL, is concerned, you have query for int that returns an integer. So obviously you have to pass a query that returns a number, an integer number. And then if you scroll down, you have query for list that takes care of generating a list of objects. So this is handy if you have a SQL query that returns multiple records. Then you also have query for long. So if you're anticipating that the result is going to be a long, we can use this method. And then have a look at this. We have a query for object. Now this can be used for all the other data types that we need. Now in the previous tutorial, I talked about what if a query returns a string. So we could use the query for object to handle such cases. And we'll do that in this tutorial. So let me remove this. Now let's say I need to write a method that returns the circle name for the circle whose ID I'm passing. So this could be a public string. It returns a string, get circle name. And then I pass in a end circle ID. Okay. So now the, the query would be a string SQL equals select circle name where id equals question mark. So I am passing in an id and I'm fetching the circle name. So I'm assuming it's name here, I'm sorry. It's just name, it's the column name. So I'm getting the name where I'm passing the ID. Now, what is the method that I need to use to run this? I will use the JDBC template dot query for object. Now the query for object has different signatures, it's overloaded, but uh, I will use this option over here. It takes in a string as well as it takes in a second parameter, which is the required type, which is the type that this particular string, this particular SQL query is returning. So I will send this. So the SQL is the SQL that I've just generated and the required type will be string the class. Okay, so now this is going to execute this query and then return a string. So we are telling it that the return type is going to be a string by passing the string dot class over here. But there's one thing that we are missing. We have a parameter in this case. In the previous query, we didn't have a parameter. It was just a query that it had to run. 
Now, in the case of a parameter, what we can do is we can pass the parameter also to this method. So what we need to do is we need to pass, well, let me actually show you that method signature. It's JDBC template. dot query for object. So here you can see there is this signature over here, which takes in three parameters. One is the SQL, one is an object array of arguments, and the third parameter is the required type. So this is what we're going to use. So the object array of arguments is going to be the arguments that you need to pass to the SQL over here. So you have just one argument, one parameter placeholder over here. So it's going to be an array of just one element. But if we have multiple parameters, we could pass all of them as an array. And that's going to be the, the second parameter over here. The third parameter has to be the return type. Whatever object type that we are returning in the query, that needs to be passed over here. So I'll remove this and we'll add the object array over here. I'll say new object array and I will pass in the circle ID. It's just a one element array. Okay, so now this is going to return me a string. So all I need to do is return the result of this method. And that's it. So let's save this. And now I will try executing that method over here. So I will use the get circle name and I'll pass the ID of one because we know this is the only record in the table. Let's save and run this. There you go, first circle is printed because this is the name. So again, we have used JDBC template to simplify drastically the amount of code that we need to write to get a query executed. So we've done a couple of methods now. We have an integer return type and we have a string return type. But now what if I want to return the circle object itself, which is what we are doing over here. We are preparing the circle object and we are returning it. So I'm taking in an ID and then returning a circle object for a circle that has that ID. Well, string, even though it's an object, the JDBC template has the intelligence to convert a varchar column into a string and then return the string return type. But the JDBC template obviously does not know about our custom model like a circle. It does not know which column needs to go to which member variable. So we can have some kind of an ORM tool which does that for us. If you use Hibernate, uh, one of the things that Hibernate does is map which column goes to which member variable. But then we are not using Hibernate here. We're using plain JDBC. So we will have to provide the code that lets the JDBC template know that name has to go to the circles. Let me open this here. Name has to go to the name and the ID has to go to the ID. So we have to write the code to do the mapping. And then JDBC template still takes care of the rest. But here, when we're returning uh, the type of circle, we need to do two things. First, we need to provide the query. And the second, we need to actually write code for the mapping. And we need to tell JDBC template that, hey, this is the code that you need to run in order to map to the custom type that we're going to provide. And then you're going to return the custom type as the output of this query for object. So that is what we're going to do now. So let's say I have an implementation of this method public circle get circle for ID. I'm going to call it a different name because we already have a get circle that takes in a circle ID. So I'm going to say get circle for ID. I'm going to pass in teacher circle ID. Now the, the query, it's very similar to this. I'll just copy this. 
will be instead of select name, it's going to be a select star. I need all the columns of that record. Okay, so now I will pass this to the JDBC template. I'll still use the query for object. Let's remove this. So the first type that we need to pass, the first argument that we need to pass is of course the SQL. Okay. And the second type that we need to pass is again an object array to plug in all the parameters of this query. So here I have one query. So I still need to pass this, a new object array of the circle ID. So I'll just paste this here. So this is going to be the second parameter. So this, so far, it's the same. Now the third parameter has to be something called as a row mapper. Now what is a row mapper? A row mapper is a class that has a particular callback method that takes care of mapping the output of a result set to an object. So this is the mapping that I'm talking about. So we need to have some code which knows that the circle ID is actually the ID of the circle object. And then the get string of name is actually the name member variable of the circle object. So we need to provide that code somewhere. And that code has to be inside a class that is a row mapper. So let's see that signature over here. If you look at the query for object over here, see here you have a SQL and a row mapper, and here you have a SQL, an object array, and a row mapper. So these two signatures are required. Whenever you need to run a query that returns the entire uh, record, or probably some columns in that you want to put into a particular model object. So you would use this version when you do not have any arguments in the query and you would use this version when you need sorry this version when you need to substitute the arguments in the query since we do have arguments this is the one that we're going to use so we need to write our own custom class that implements this row mapper interface and that class will have the logic to do this conversion so we'll learn about the row mapper and we'll implement it in the next tutorial